Welcome to the Tadis Timeout Podcast. I'm Matthew McLaurin. In this episode, we'll be discussing laboratory air distribution basics. As it relates to HVAC system design, we're mainly concerned with chemical, biological, and animal research labs. Other common labs that require specific attention from HVAC engineers and designers are physical labs, such as physics, electrical, and microelectronics labs. From an HVAC perspective, we are looking to do four main things. One, controlled exposure to any contaminants that are being used or created in the space. Two, contain any odors that are present or generated as a result of the experiments or testing. Three, provide adequate ventilation for the scientists or technicians present. And lastly, to provide cooling and heating to the space in order to maintain a comfortable working environment for the laboratory staff. In order to control contaminants, a primary engineering control and a secondary engineering control are utilized. This is very similar to sterile compounding pharmacies and clean rooms. For labs, the primary engineering control is a fume hood. The entire room then becomes the secondary engineering control, where we are preventing any contaminants and or odors from escaping the lab. This is achieved through the use of dilution ventilation purging any contaminants that may have escaped containment within a hood and by maintaining a negative pressure relationship to the adjoining spaces. In order to maintain a negative pressure relationship within the laboratory, we need to supply less airflow to the lab than is exhausted from the room. The volume of exhaust is based on the combined exhaust flow rates for the fume hoods utilized and the minimum required air changes per hour. Overall, airflow rates for laboratories are set by a number of factors. Depending on the lab type, equipment in use, and the occupancy, the supply or exhaust airflow rate will be determined by the largest of the following criteria. Thermal load, minimum air change rate, and supply air offset to maintain pressurization. As I previously mentioned, fume hoods are the primary control device to contain contaminants that are being used in the lab. They heat contaminants contained using air that is being pulled across the opening of the hood. The velocity of this airflow is called the capture velocity and is typically between 50 and 100 feet per minute. Maintaining this velocity is critical for contaminant control. This velocity can be affected by external air motion either from the movement of occupants in the room or those working in the hoods. If it is affected too much, it can result in contaminants escaping the hood. In order to prevent this, we want to use radial throw diffusers like the Radiotech and Tritech. These diffusers have the ability to supply large volumes of air with very short throw patterns. Radial diffusers are also unique in the fact that airflow travels in the direction of throw with little or no spread parallel to the flow path. This allows them to be placed relatively close to another and to fume hoods. However, they should be placed at least two to three feet away from the face of the hood. And they should always be located such that their throw pattern is parallel to the face of the fume hood as shown here. For more information on laboratory air distribution, please check out our previous webinar on the topic at our e-learning site or on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe while you're there, and thanks for taking the time out with us.